Hi, everyone. Good morning. Welcome. Just would like to welcome everyone. We're going to give a few minutes for attendees to just file in. So go ahead and uh, take a seat and get comfortable. We'll be starting very shortly. Hi, everyone. So once again, thank you all for joining. Uh, we're going to give it a just a few minutes. We have people joining from all over the world, uh, from China, from the United States, Argentina, Japan, Africa, Europe. Really a fantastic uh, global webinar uh, with clinicians, uh, people from the industry, a really great group, and we're very grateful for Dr. Pang to join us. Um, we had a few technical difficulties this morning, um, so unfortunately the connection wasn't working. So currently we're going to have Dr. Pang on one phone and me on another, so we'll be speaking between two devices, but no worries, that's not going to uh, change the presentation. He's pre prepared a fantastic presentation for us. So we'll be getting into it in a moment. A couple of quick housekeeping items. I'm going to just go through your console real quick just to show you guys how to use it. And then I'm going to introduce uh, our speaker and we'll jump right into it. Uh, my name is Omar M. Khatib. I'm the Director of Growth at Petrero Medical. And I'm also joined by my uh, fantastic and wonderful colleague, uh, Rebecca Lynn. She's our Senior Vice President of Strategy and Global Business Development. Uh, without Rebecca, this, uh, this webinar would not be possible, so we, have, we really have to thank her quite a lot for getting Dr. Payne to uh, spend time with us today. Now, uh, for, the, uh, for the webinar, uh, I'm going to go through a quick uh, housekeeping item, so give me one moment. And again, thank you all for joining. So before we begin, just I'm going to cover a couple housekeeping items. Uh, at the bottom of your screen are multiple application engagement tools you can use. Um, all the engagement tools are resizable and movable, so feel free to move them around. You can expand your slide area or maximize it to the full screen by clicking the arrows on the top right corner. Now, if you have any questions during the webcast, you can submit them. If you look to your left, there's a Q&A box. Go ahead and submit your questions there. Now, we are going to do a live Q&A session, uh, questions and answers with Dr. Peng at the end of this presentation. So during his presentation, if you have a question, submit the question in the box there. I'll be able to see it, and then I'll tell Dr. Peng at the end of the presentation. Uh, for the best viewing experience, we do recommend using a wired internet connection, and of course, close the programs and browser sessions. I know for many of you who are doing work from home, you have many tabs open. Go ahead and close those out so you have a nice, uh, uh, streaming uh, experience. Uh, and of course, this webcast is being st streamed through your computer. There's no dial-in number, and so for the best audio quality, turn your audio up. Um, now, if you're having any issues, and let's say it's a uh, presentation might not uh, be coming through, just refresh your screen and everything will be fine. And finally, any additional answers you can find uh, in the bottom of the, your screen, there's different icons there. Uh, and lastly, uh, uh, you know, we've left a nice resource list for you. Uh, one of the papers that Dr. Peng published on uh, the COVID-19 virus. And also for us, you know, we represent Patron Medical and our, uh, our role in this is that we want to provide a platform to bring everyone the best information possible on this, uh, on this uh, uh, pandemic. We're also doing a, a support program for hospitals here in the U.S. So if you're interested to learn more, you can check that Accurate COVID-19 help link in the resource list. So, Without further ado, let me introduce our presenter. Our presenter is Dr. Xiong Peng. He was a clinical fellow in training in the USA with USMLE credit, credit, credentialing and ECFMG. He was also a research fellow trained with CRISMA, that's Clinical Research Investigation and Modeling of Acute Illness Certificate. A uh, former faculty member of critical care medicine at the University of Pittsburgh Medical Center, an adjunct fac uh, faculty member at the Center of Critical Care and Nephrology as well. He also serves as the member of an ed editorial board for the Journal of Critical Care uh, and Blood Purification Medicine. Now, currently, he serves as the chair and professor of critical care medicine at Zhonghan Hospital and the vice director of Center of Clinical Trials at Wuhan University. So without further ado, let me introduce you, Dr. Xiong Pang. Dr. Pang, the floor is yours. Let me know when you move to the next slide, and I'll click through for you. Hi, hello. Uh, uh, I was honored uh, to share my experience with you. Uh, I'm not sure if you can hear me. 
Can you hear me clear? Yes. Yes, Hello? we can hear you very clearly. Can you hear me? Hello. Okay, 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 okay. Yes. So, uh, I'm Dr. Pat, uh, from the Department of Critical Care Medicine, uh, Tuna Hospital, Ohio University. Uh, it's my great honor to share my experience with you. So uh, today, uh, my topic is what we learned uh, from COVID-19 outbreak, outbreak in the Pegum Khan. Uh, I'm a scientist as well as a medical researcher. I have not known any conflict of interest to clear. So today, I will talk about the following uh, content. And first of all, I will talk about, about how to prepare the outbreak of the COVID-19. And actually, in the early stage of the outbreak, the medical resources, uh, including the uh, medical bed, ICU bed, and, and the human resources uh, are limited. So we need to mobilize the medical resource under the help of the government uh, or the social authority. And uh, we need to organize uh, more uh, teams, especially for the ICU team, to rescue uh, the patients. The more ICU beds, the more uh, patients uh, will be survived. And uh, our uh, approach is uh, to, uh, first uh, to uh, shut down uh, all the new kids medical care in the hospital and just to keep the uh, emergency care, uh, uh, force all the uh, uh, patients uh, for the, uh, uh, or force all the emergency patients in, in, the, in one building and take all the other patients uh, with the COVID-19 in the in other cases, and then we can we can use all the uh, try to use all the medical resources for the uh, for the COVID-19 patients, and also uh, we recruit we uh, recruit the, the physicians uh, from the and it's all it's uh, also from the the cardiac surgeon uh, to to join our to join us and to set up the new team for the patient. And also, uh, the personal protection is quite is, uh, our top priority, and we need to prepare uh, that the personal protection equipment, including the gloves, gloves, uh, protective shoes, and uh, uh, the mask, goggles, face shield, and hood. And also, we set up the uh, the, uh, the protocols for the. Uh, Precautions for droplet, close contact, and airborne. Also, uh, we set up the, the protocol uh, in our ICU uh, how to wear the PPE and how to take off the PPE. And we, and we put the, uh, the camera in the room to monitor everybody to make sure everybody can follow the guidelines to uh, how to. Uh, how to take how to take off the PPE is for quite important, and also we monitor the ICU environment regularly uh, for the uh, potential virus infection, for the for the potential virus uh, uh, pollution, and also the uh, the, the, the general speed uh, of the transmission is the the human to human. Uh, transmission is quite often, especially in the hospital. And uh, 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 you know, in the, in almost 40% 40, 40 of our hospitals in the first month uh, uh, where the, the medical uh, the medical workers as well as the, the hospitalized patients. So the, the transmission is quite often in the, in the, in the hospital. And also, uh, most of uh, of the infected you know, healthcare workers, uh, not from the ICU, not from the ER, but also from the other departments, because the, uh, the atypical uh, patients uh, came to our hospital uh, uh, and, the, and the, they infected our uh, medical uh, uh, professionals because we didn't know, because we didn't know uh, the patients uh, have. Uh, COVID-19, if 
profesory, the coaches of the abdominal symptoms, ILEA, and they came to the professional department, they came to the internal management, and we will test it out for patients with there. And also, uh, we need to set up the uh, policy for uh, track age, uh, including the the fear, the fever clinic, ER, and the uh, uh, general ward, as well as the ICU. And also, we have the uh, criteria for the uh, hospital admission and uh, also ICU admission for the COVID-19 patients. Uh, next, uh, I will briefly talk about the, the general features of the COVID-19 patients. And uh, uh, this is the, the practical uh, features of the patients infected with the COVID-19. And uh, you can see the age, uh, gender, and other probability uh, for the for the patients. And also we compare the, the patients uh, as living in the ICU and uh, also the patients uh, at the beginning of the, the general war. And also we found the patients at the beginning of the ICO at relative older and also with much more uh, uh, probabilities. And also the, regarding the symptoms and the size, the most common symptoms in in outside, including the fever, I think, uh, dry cough, mild hair, and the dyspnea. And also, uh, about 10% of the patients present the initial of the uh, abdominal symptoms, including diarrhea and, and uh, other uh, abdominal symptoms. And with this kind of the patients, uh, uh, usually, uh, in fact, there are uh, medical professions in the general world. And also, regarding the clinical process, uh, this is the, uh, our observation for the, for the patient. Uh, the time from the first symptoms to this year uh, was five days, and seven days uh, to hospital admission, eight days to ARDS. Uh, also, this is the, uh, the left test for the COVID-19, and also uh, this is the very typical uh, figures for the left test for the left with the patient that uh, has uh, hypoxemia, and also uh, elevated the uh, lactate dehydrogenase. So this is the, for the uh, test of CT, this is the typical test of CT uh, demonstrated that the uh, ground glass opacity uh, in, the, in the CT uh, initially from the, the outer part of the lung and then uh, going to the, the all air of the lung. Okay. Next, uh, I will talk about the diagnosis of the COVID-19. So, uh, this is the, the criteria for the diagnosis, including the history and the symptoms size. The typical symptoms, symptoms is the abdominal fatigue here. And the left test is the hypoxemia. Also, we need to take it around the full test to exclude the other uh, virus, uh, uh, virus uh, uh, diseases. And the uh, typical test of PC demonstrated the multiple uh, pressures uh, starting from our part uh, of the lung. And uh, also, we need to run the, uh, the PCR test. Uh, unfortunately, this test uh, the sensitivity it's not high, around 40 to, uh, to 50 percent. Also, we need to the, the, the antibody test before the, we still suspect the, the, the virus, but the, the virus test is negative. We will run the uh, antibody test. So, based on the, the symptoms, 
left test, the clinical, clinical chest CT, and then the first up the clinical diagnosis. So if the patient uh, with the, the, virus, the positive virus test and we set up the confirmed diagnosis for the patients. Okay, uh, next uh, we are talk about how to manage the clinical need of patients with the COVID-19. So this is the, the features of the ICU patients uh, in our database. Uh, and uh, uh, you can see the, you know, the average uh, score, so what score, actually uh, not, not high compared to other clinical need of patients. Uh, the people ratio is, 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 is very, very low. It means that all the patients uh, communicated with the uh, severe ARPS. Also, about the, the, the organ injury and the complications uh, in our patients. And uh, I just mentioned that uh, most of the patients, the majority of the patients, developed the ARPS. Uh, other uh, organ injury, including the, 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 the cardiac injury, and uh, around uh, almost 60% uh, uh, of the patients uh, have uh, cardiac problems, including the uh, anemia and other uh, cardiac injuries. And about 30% of the patients develop the shock. Uh, also, the, about the uh, ventilation uh, strategy in our patients, and almost uh, half of the patients requiring uh, invasive uh, mechanical ventilation. Uh, Ten percent of the, the patients uh, switch to the ECMO. Uh, uh, this is the, the up to the, the data uh, from our current patients in the, in the last uh, month. And also, you see the, the patients, the, the people ratio is always quite low, only uh, 115. And also, we measure the you know, IL6 level. IL6 level is the high. And uh, uh, we also measure the, the lung compliance uh, when uh, the patient uh, was intubated in, in the first day is uh, also quite low, so around 20. And also, uh, 70 percent of the patient uh, is if the uh, intubation, intubation, only 28 uh, percent of the patient uh, survived only. Uh, only from the non invasive uh, mechanical ventilation. So, also uh, around 80% uh, of the patients uh, need uh, prompt sedation ventilation as well as the ECMO treatment. And uh, also about the complications, also type severe compared to the, uh, to the, to the first. Uh, uh, to, to the patient uh, in the first line, I mean, it's, uh, for the ARPS, almost 90% uh, of the patients uh, develop the ARPS, and almost 70% uh, uh, of the patients have the, uh, the current problems. 20% uh, of the patients have the kidney uh, injuries. 40% of the patients uh, complicated with the shock. Uh, here, I will briefly talk about the key points uh, for the ventilation approach. So, uh, the non protective port approach is, is extremely important for the patients. And we prolong uh, the patient as early as possible. And also, we evaluate the, uh, the parameters we uh, set uh, for the patient frequently and switch or change the model or the parameters if the uh, not a parameter. Also, uh, we calculate the uh, and take a volume based on the 
trans pressure if possible, or gravity pressure. And also, uh, we keep the gravity pressure less than 15. Uh, the, the political pressure less than 28. Uh, we try to avoid the statute called Pamelori. And uh, be careful of, uh, about the non recruitment maneuver. Uh, here, we send the highest people around, this, uh, around the country. So, for our patients, the people uh, are, uh, are quite low compared to the, to the patients uh, with other ARDS. So, uh, around the, the mode of the ventilation, uh, first, I will talk about high flow natural ventilation. So, I recommend this model in the Loop with the vacuum pressure because I can, I'm concerned about the, uh, the, the pollution, the air pollution uh, from the uh, from the public generalized uh, from the high flow network elevation. So if the people ratio around uh, 200 to 300, we, uh, we will try the high flow and uh, this, we will set the the flow is around 40 uh, to 50 air per dinner. And uh, observed uh, for two hours. And we evaluate the capacity based on the, the LOX uh, score. LOX score is calculated from the respiratory rate, the saturation, and SIO2. So if the LOX, uh, LOX score more than 2.8, uh, continue high flow. If less than uh, 2.8 uh, stop high flow and uh, go to the non invasive ventilation. Well, about the non invasive ventilation, uh, if the, the people measure around 150 to, to, to 200, we will uh, try the non invasive. And uh, uh, here, I also uh, mentioned that the, the backup may worsen the lung increase because the uh, patient has the high respiratory rate and the high volume. We have increased the, the transpulmonary uh, pressure and worsen the lung injury and uh, gradually reduce the pulmonary diagnosis. So, the issue of the I pop around 12, E pop. Around five to eight, and uh, also observed for two hours, and also in before the tidal volume. If the tidal volume less than nine mL per kilo, continue. If uh, more than uh, twelve, uh, stop uh, lung disease in the patient. So, uh, if the keyhole ratio less than five fifty, uh, uh, we uh, we are in the verification directly. So first, uh, we will test uh, uh, the uh, the long recruitment recruitment uh, and I just mentioned that the highest people around the country. So uh, we will we will see if the patient is responsible to the uh, to the recruitment manure. So if not. Uh, and with the drug pressure more than 16, and there will be a tongue application and uh, with the prolonged position. Also, we will uh, monitor the lung compliance. So, if the people ratio is uh, still uh, less than 50, and uh, the the, the proof ratio is more than the the, the, the proof of pressure is more than 35. And the patient also had the hypercapnia with the asbestos, and the, uh, we will go to the ECMO for the patient. So here, I will briefly uh, share the, the, the patient uh, the case report with you. This is the uh, six to four uh, female patient transferred to our ICU from out of the hospital due to the severe ischemia and tachycardia. And she was diagnosed uh, with COVID-19 in outside the hospital. Uh, she uh, was healthy, peacefully, and uh, she received uh, the antibiotic medication uh, as well as the antibiotic 
on this for five years. And still no, it's for seven days. And uh, none in which condition to none days. So here is her uh, treatment for the non invasive in the last of nine days. And you can see the, the vertical razor uh, become, uh, become uh, 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 faster and faster. And the stabilization become uh, uh, lower and lower. And also the, uh, the FIO2 also uh, increased. So, uh, it's not the non invasive uh, fail uh, for the patients. And uh, when she became our ICO, she, uh, her uh, partner required 30, generation 18. The level is quite high. And uh, we, and we uh, prepare for the innovation for her. And uh, the, the last year, uh, she was uh, a little bit astonished. And also, uh, complicated the uh, uh, high level of the carbon dioxide. And her, and her, uh, uh, ratio is quite low. It's less than 50. So, uh, we, uh, innovated her and give the uh, support, uh, uh, give the uh, well located water. For four hundred, and uh, this is the, the people who said for her, and uh, actually uh, the the compliance is the, around uh, twenty. The the, the critical pressure is uh, twenty six for her. So we uh, give the maximally elective for her, and also the uh, crown her uh, for the uh, top house and fortunately her condition. Uh, become uh, uh, become edited and the uh, people just uh, less than 16 for four hours and also uh, she developed the she developed the hypertension requiring the wet places and the which which the ECMO for her so also we did the like the bed by the echocardia for her so you can uh, you can see the uh, she developed uh, the active core pulmonary, uh, and uh, also uh, you know the her uh, the right ventricle uh, become large and also compromise the left ventricle, so induce the you know the lower cardiac cardiac output for sure. So she requiring the high dose of the uh, the around the one cycle of kilo before ECMO. So after turn off of the ECMO, so you will see the the, the, the echo. So condition uh, significantly improved. improved. Uh, so I mean the and also uh, uh, the level estimate is going down to point three cycle of a kilo per per minute. So this is the just the uh, you will see if we improve the uh, hypoxemia and the, and the condition will be improved. So this is the uh, uh, her treatment for the animal in the for nine days, and also this is the this is, this is the slowly slowly improved for her. And uh, we uh, with the uh, the beginning of the ECMO uh, for her in the, uh, in the day 10 and switch the uh, mechanical regulation. Also, uh, after around five days of the mechanical regulation, her condition uh, slightly improved. So, uh, in the day 50, uh, she was in the day 10. Well, she was uh, activated. So the lesson uh, we learned from this case. So here I uh, I still uh, focus on the you know the the round protective uh, the strategy strategies so the type very important. So we need to evaluate the you know the mode uh, frequently, and uh, we cannot keep one mode for a long time for nine days. So this is the this is the positive position, and also uh, prevent 
ethnical Pamelonian. So this is the this is the this is the the uh, induced by the severe hypoxemia. But if we improve the hypoxemia, this problem will be improved. Now here is the whole chart for the validation support for our patient. So based on the uh, T cholesterol, uh, we that we we are we still choose the different uh, mode of the validation, and then we will continue to evaluate which mode works or not. If nothing works, we need to we need to switch, we need to change the mode, and uh, and choose the best mode for the patient. So luckily, I will uh, talk about the uh, the outcome of the patients with the COVID-19. So actually, in, uh, in the first uh, database, in the, in the in the first month uh, of uh, uh, most of the patients uh, have very good prognosis in our ICUs. And uh, in the in the putting the mind of the patients because all the patients uh, transferred from other hospitals. And they were more severe compared to that uh, to those in the first line. So I mean, uh, this patient uh, overall mortality is around thirty uh, percent. Uh, and also, uh, we uh, observe uh, which uh, uh, markers we have uh, predicted the outcome for the patient. So here is the we compare the survivors and non-survivors of the patients. So the uh, the non-survivors uh, marked with the red color, uh, you can see is the is the is the complicated is the uh, uh, persistent uh, or lymphocyte uh, and uh, higher diameter, higher urea, and higher creatinine. Uh, and also, we uh, measured uh, uh, other benefits for the patients, uh, including the white spine and uh, uh, the peak, the SOA score, and the, the long injury score, which is called this. And we can see the for the uh, of lung survivor. The lung survivor uh, here marked with the, the yellow color. Uh, with the persistent elevated carbon dioxide and the uh, persistent elevated the lung injury score, the uh, persistent uh, uh, high heart rate, and uh, the entirely uh, high force of the uh, muscular reflexion, the entirely high force. Of the microprocessor, and uh, also we found the uh, 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 the the multi uh, uh, variable analysis for the patient, and uh, we see the uh, you know we see the patient here, and uh, you know if we see the the lung combined. Uh, the survivors uh, usually uh, with the uh, little higher uh, lung uh, compliance in the first day of the innovation compared to the uh, to that uh, the lung survivors. Oh, so here uh, uh, I would uh, uh, summarize uh, the content I, I talked. So. The uh, preparation for the outbreak is important uh, as the medical resource always limited. The uh, transmission was frequently and uh, uh, characterized with the hospital with infection. Uh, the uh, clinical patients were, were preparation mainly for the transmission. Clinical inner patients uh, tend to be older with uh, more uh, common features. And the next uh, abnormalities. The time treat the models of the ventilation support with now protective approach is, is, uh, is very important. The most common complications are ARDS, 
good year and the public short. Nearly half of the patients who are in the waste examination are now compliant in the ICU or in the, uh, the first step of the examination. And uh, the first person to study analytical uh, carbon dioxide predicted a uh, poor outcome. So well, thank you uh, for your attention. Thank you uh, for your inviting I'm happy to take any questions. Wonderful. Wonderful. Dr. Pang, thank you very much. And thank you for being uh, uh, flexible with us due to the technical uh, difficulties, but we made it work and everyone is really uh, sending a lot of fantastic. Thank you all for all the very sweet and kind uh, messages. Uh, but Dr. Pang, we, uh, we definitely have a lot of questions. Uh, so let me start uh, with some top ones. So um, we have a fantastic question um, from Steve. And the question is, um, how early do you decide to do a tracheostomy after VV ECMO? Is there a concern for airway surgery? And should you wait until the PCR is negative? Uh, uh, I'm sorry, I, uh, I can't hear it clearly, so it's, uh, I'm not sure no, no. the microphone some, some No problem. worries. The uh, Rebecca. Okay. Rebecca, I'm going to send you the question right now through the team chat, and you can maybe ask it quick. Yes. Yeah, sure. So, Dr. Pan, the, the question is how early to Franco's tell me after VV ECMO uh, concern for airway surgery with until PCR negative, or when you would do that? Uh, how early you uh, need uh, the the with ECMO? Yes. How early? Oh, uh, so is the. So uh, also, uh, we have okay. We have data uh, to uh, to summarize uh, the with the ECMO. I mean the uh, the for the date uh, to initiate the ECMO is the. The thing is that uh, you know the, from the first uh, symptoms to the initiation of the ECMO for us is uh, around uh, is uh, almost uh, almost uh, uh, you know the uh, you know almost the, the thirty days already. So it's uh, a little bit you know a little bit later for the patient. So, Kwan Yi Sheng, he asked, "Is the ECMO start to do? Is it in the middle of the ECMO, or is it in the middle of the ECMO?" 呃，有没有担心这个 airway 的 surgery 的问题，或者是你会等到 PCR 呃阴性才会呃才会做这个气管切开术？哦，没有没有做错so, uh, so uh, about the tube the intervention and also the tube optomy, and we have uh, the very good uh, uh, PPE. You know, we, we, uh, uh, we don't concern, we don't consider about the, you know, the, thing, the, the virus or positive or negative. So if the if the patient is weak, the intervention, if the patient is weak. Uh, to me. We, 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 are, we are do that, but we don't consider about the you know, the, you know, the, the virus level is the positive or negative. So, uh, but the, you know, the PP is quite important. We, uh, we choose the, the airborne uh, protection uh, for, the, for the procedures. Fantastic. The next question, Hello? Is, Rebecca, I'm going to send it to you. Yes, we can hear you. We can hear you very well. Uh, next question is, how long, uh, if, you, if you know, how long does the virus survive outside biological fluid? Okay, so this is the, this is the very big question, so actually, I, I don't know yet. 
because the, the, I think someone uh, has done the, the study already and published the, the, the papers in the journal. You know, the, you know, the help of the open world, you know, the virus survival in the, you know, in the, in the different environment, in the, uh, you know, in the table or in the machine or in the servers or in the, even in the, uh, in the, in the telephone. So, but they have, they have, they don't like the, you know, the data, but I don't know the, the details. Got it. Okay. Next, next question, Dr. Peng. Um, as you know, uh, all over the world, there's a variety of uh, clinical uh, trials and, and applications going with different medications. The question is, have there been any clinical treatments, including hydroxychloroquine and azithromycin being used? If so, what are the outcomes? So, you mentioned that, so uh, how uh, uh, the you know how this type of the medication used in the in the clinical trials, including the antiviral medication, including the uh, the including the the clopine and other medications, right? So uh, actually, uh, uh, I don't know yet, but uh, I mean based on the you know, based on the conversation with the with our colleagues in other hospitals. So we we run the uh, the, the clinical trial for the uh, the uh, for the the remdesivir the the the, the remdesivir. And based on the they have a clue. They have two groups. The the one group is the you know the for the bio treatment. The other group is for the for the for the clinical uh, treatment. But the uh, uh, based on the, the conversation uh, from the state, uh, probably the the really best way of public work for the for the uh, for the for the for the COVID life, for the for the virus. Also, uh, regarding the you know the cold cream, the cold cream also the wrong the cold cream, but uh, actually I well, actually I didn't know the result yet, but also the, the you know. They have they have competition, but also only with the uh, more sample size, but uh, the shows the shows some signals, but I don't know I don't know the you know the details. Also, uh, for the for the medication it's called uh uh Lopinova. the study just published uh, uh, one week ago in the New England and also the, for the clinical trial, the RT, the result from the RT actually is no, no effect uh, from the from the from the uh, uh, the So because this is the, all I know, all I know for you know, for the medication with the uh, uh, for the trials for the for the COVID nineteen. Got it. Got it. Um, next, Hello. next question. Yes, yes, I'm here. I'm still here, Doctor Peng. Um, so, next question is yes. um, uh, is from an attendee that used to live in the China in the early 2000s, and their question is that they recall or remember that in China, smoking was uh, more common among men than women. Uh, is there any relationship between this and is there a higher mortality among men? Due to smoking. Is there any difference about the the you know the male and female? Yeah, and if uh, okay. yes, and if, if smoking okay. influences the result. The difference of the okay, so it's uh, it's hard to say. So based on the the first, uh, the first paper published in the light paper, the shows that most of the infected uh, patients were male, were male. But uh, uh, however, in the based on the the, the, two, the the big database, actually there's no any differences between the male and the female regarding the incidence, regarding the mortality. 
had a, a slight acceleration for the first global uh, patient because this the first global uh, patient were well, the whole from the uh, you know the the winner goodness the seafood market because all the they are they are they are they are the workers in the working in the seafood market they are I mean the, I mean, they, they are liberal. They are liberal. I think that most of the liberal have, uh, were, were male. So this is my speculation uh, for, for that. Why, why in the first group of patients were, were male? Because they, they all the patients from the, the seafood market, they are liberal in the seafood market. So so I, I guess probably, probably most of them uh, uh, were male. Wonderful. So the next question is actually related to uh, to this this last one. So the question is, uh, as as it was shown that the uh, the outbreak happened uh, in the seafood market uh, marketplace, are there you know uh, moving forward, it seems that an important part to um, maintaining and protecting populations from pandemics like this is public health education. Um, are there any government uh, uh, facilities or, or, or plans to start uh, educating populations in the seafood market, perhaps to reduce, reduce uh, consumption of specific foods to prevent uh, future outbreaks from happening? Uh, 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 uh,就是彭主任,他问的是,呃,在中国的话,因为是在海鲜市场先发的嘛,那么现在有没有国家的政策是说,限制使用一些食物,或者,呃,就是有没有相关的政策,比方说教育,呃,民众或者科普? Uh, 对。uh, in the in the last month, uh, as well, and the, the government issued a, a law to prohibit the uh, eating the, the wild animal. So, so this is the the, the, the new law issued uh, last last month. So I think that this probably will uh, prevent such incidents in the near future. Omar. Got it. Thank you. Yes, yes, yes. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to uh, go through. We have a lot of different questions coming in. Um, so another question is uh, the uh, effect of fluid balance uh, as it occurs on the, on the lung. How important is fluid management uh, for COVID-19 patients? And more specifically, sorry,啊,那個,那個,那個,那個,那個,那個,那個,那個,那個,那個,那個,那個,那個,那個,那個,那個,那個,那個,那個,那個,那個,那個,那個,那個,那個,那個,那個,那個,那個,那個,那個,
we try to visit it. We try to visit the food we face for, for this kind of cooking. Got it. Another question. Uh, this is a very interesting one. For the patients that were in critical care and uh, were, you know, were taken care of and they were able to leave, um, can patients who were infected uh, that got healthy get reinfected? And if so, what was their condition like? So the question is, if an inf infected patient infected patient gets better, can they can they or have they been reinfected? And if so, what was the condition like?呃，所以大家问，大家问就是呃，如果已经治愈的或者好转的患者，如果出院了的话，还有没有可能再会被感染？就是呃，就是治愈复阳的问题。嗯，当呃，actually，这是这是一个very difficult 的这个呃 issues。呃，because 呃，when the patient。uh, when the patient is discharged uh, from the hospital, uh, usually we have the criteria for the for the discharge. In this case, the patient uh, had uh, consecutively three times on black people, uh, various uh, black people uh, PCR results. Also, as well as other clinical uh, symptoms. Or including the the you know, the test the team. and if the patient is discharged from the hospital, and uh, and, and then they uh, they have the follow up, they have, they have the they have the positive test again. So this uh, I mean there are two issues, the two two quite uh, actually uh, you know the first uh, you know the because I I mentioned that the PCR the sensitivity is only forty. 40 to 50 percent. Probably, you know, the next people is the fourth next in the in the you know, in the you know, for, uh, from the previous uh, uh, preceding result. So this is a, this is a this is very common. The second issue, the second is that it's a truly obvious, but truly it's really detectable. But it's the, so this is the how to. was very important as the medical resources uh, were, were limited. How did you and your team prepare and increase the efficiency of the ICU? So with limited resources, how did you and your team prepare and increase efficiency in the ICU? Yeah, yeah. So actually, uh, actually, this, uh, in my department, all uh, the ICU bed, uh, all almost 
the triple test uh, for the you know for the COVID nineteen patients. And uh, of course, we need to recruit the uh, physicians, recruit the uh, the nurses. But it's actually difficult to recruit the uh, physicians. So uh, in my hospital, because we uh, we shut down all the routine care for the for other for the for the but only keep the emergency care. So we have a lot of the physicians that so are looking for us. So so uh, I have the I have the priority choice to choose the physician from other department. So uh, in my new seat, I recruit a lot of the physicians uh, from the uh, from the department of the uh, cardiac uh, cardiac surgery, uh, from the department of the anesthesiology. Because, because all these surgeons, we have the similar uh, training background in the ICU. So they can help us a lot. A lot. So uh, actually, I recruit uh, uh, huge members of the uh, anesthetologist, uh, current uh, surgeons waiting for us. For me. And also, uh, they're working in our ICU only as a clinical fellow. And we uh, we have the uh, ICU physician to to monitor them. Yeah, whether or not they are they are uh, uh, in the in the in the attendees. They are they are uh, 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 cardiac cardiac surgical attendees, but uh, in our ICU we can see them uh, as a clinical fellow. So uh, so it means this. Approach not uh, for uh, for ICU in the early stage of the outbreak, and uh, and also the medical the, the quality the medical quality the care quality is good for for, for the patient. Got it. Wonderful. Well, Dr. Peng, we are at the top of the hour. We we do have a lot a lot of questions, but we want to be mindful of your time, so. Uh, I want to uh, thank you on behalf of Petro. Thank you very, very much for uh, spending time and, and sharing your knowledge and, and all the uh, uh, insights uh, from your time uh, in the hospital. And we also would like to thank you and, of course, all the medical professionals in China and, of course, the Chinese people. We know that uh, you're going through very tough times and we're rooting for you and we really appreciate everything that you and everyone there are doing to make sure to uh, control the virus and and lower the uh, the spread of it, and of course share the information with uh, the rest of the world. So we really thank you quite a lot for that. Oh, thank you, thank you for your thank you uh, for the me. So uh, it's my great honor to uh, to share my my experience with you. And if you if you have any other questions, please uh, don't hesitate to contact me. I'm happy to answer any questions. Okay, thank you. Take care. Absolutely. Thank, thank you, sir. And if you spread a word that if you have more questions, feel free to send to uh, our message uh, email address. We'll send out a contact uh, contact address that if you have more questions, we're happy to forward that directly to Dr. Pan and get answers from him. Yes, thank you, Rebecca, for, for mentioning that. For everyone, uh, just you can look at the uh, speaker bio, and under there you'll see an email, which is mar uh, which is an email directly to us. You can submit any extra questions there, and we'll forward it on to Dr. Peng to answer later on. So once again, thank you all uh, all over the world for joining us today. If you wanted to re-listen to this uh, webcast, the webcast is recorded. You will all receive it afterwards, and if you'd like to invite other um, uh, colleagues of yours to watch, just forward the web webcast link and they'll be able to register and watch it. Uh, thank you all again. Have a wonderful day. Take time and be safe at home and we'll see you all next time. Yeah. Bye for now.